Hey everyone, it's Joe Glines here out of Dallas, Texas. Yeah, and Jackie here from Copenhagen, Denmark. <laughs> that was the first time where there was like, it seemed like a lag. Like, I don't know, you watch movie, uh, TV shows like news and there's always that lag. You know, the person says something and then there's like a two second wait. Yeah. Uh, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah, you know, we use Zoom and we talk, you know, without the lag. And yet the, I know the broadcasters, I think they do it for suppression reasons, right? So they can have a, a bleep button. But anyway, um, and uh, we were just getting warmed up. And before we were going to start our podcast, uh, we were talking about what we've been working on. And and I realized, hey, actually, what we've been working on is is a good high level podcast topic. So why don't we go ahead and cover it? Um, and you know what? Let, oh, let me before I share my screen, I'll show you the. Um, why don't you, Jackie, talk a little bit about what we were talking about? Uh, yeah, you were talking about that. Um push bullet example you had, uh, right? Where where you were going to, to do a few changes so you could actually have something that was just a bit more robust and had more features. So so yeah, that was uh, kind of what we were getting into. Yeah. And you were getting ready to show me stuff and instead of just yeah, so uh, that, we started the recording. Yeah, yeah. So, so this is uh, the push bullet app that Maestri has built from now. Uh, again, you know, it, the design, the, the goal of this one, what we created at the time, I was like, Hey, you know, this push bullet thing is kind of cool. Um, can we build a, a little GUI to help wrap stuff so I can do like a mail merge? Like I can come in here and say, hi, and then I'm going to put first name or sorry, name, name, how are you in um, I looked up here and I saw this and that's how I know to put in percent name. And if I do a, even if I just do test, it's going to pop up. Oh, I got to check someone. Test message. It doesn't do it. So if I do send message, so here it shows you, hi, Joe, how are you? Right. It's going to do a mail merge. Um, so I didn't send it, but, um, but you get the idea, right. And we can have multiple headers. And that was the other thing was like this, because every data set with how I was using it is different. They have different headers, different fields we pipe in. Like when I was the Cub Master for Cub Scouts, I would have the, you know, the parent's name and the kid's name and, you know, whatever. So it's all very different than what I was doing mail merges with. So we were using text files as our source. And so uh, make sure it built this where I can, I can, you know, it keeps track of my lists of different, you know, groups and stuff I have. Oops. And, and then I can, you know, import this and send them. And the cool thing is it sends them, literally sends them through my phone, right? So I can actually see, like this one, actually, this one will be to me. So uh, let me do it through my phone. Hopefully this will actually work properly. Send message. One message sent. And now I'll actually, it'll be weird, but here I will get the message. Um, but hopefully you can see, I don't know if you can see that, Jackie. It's both the sent and you know, it was the, both the 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 sent send and the response is the same phone number because I sent it. But yeah, um, was that legible? I, I couldn't see my screen. I I couldn't really see with size uh, limitations gotcha. and stuff yeah. like that. Me, but this time I'm looking at it. There we go. Uh, it, it, uh, there it is. It's, it's possible to yeah. to at least see part of it. So so anyway, um, now. This is all nothing really new, right? But um, when we were we were talking about my business partner and I were talking about uh, another local DFW real estate wholesaler is texting people, asking people if they want to sell their home. And um, as cool as this app is, it uh, you know, it goes through my phone. Um, and so let me let me stop sharing just because there's no reason I think to ooh, not that button. I almost hit stop recording. Um, Okay, so um, this uh, push bullet, it was great, but in doing stuff in mass, we wanted to send, and I'll also, it, 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 yeah, I should have showed you, but there's a delay at the bottom. We can send like every five seconds or every 10 seconds or 15 seconds. And uh, when you're sending one at a time, it, it takes a while, right, to get through yeah. know, any, any volume. Um, however, like with text, text magic is the other tool that we use. And uh, it's a very cool tool. Even the, the program they give you, you can do mail merges very easily with it. Uh, there's some things you can't do. And, and so Macy, we actually built our own API version of that. 
But um, every hundred and I think sixty characters. Does that sound right? Uh, is is a, a minimum of four cents. And if you actually, if you include one Unicode character, like an emoji or something, yeah. Then what's crazy is it doubles the. Re so if it's even if it's just one character, it says, "Well, we have to send this at you know whatever double three eighty. Is that what that is? No, that's yeah, same. something like that. Yeah. Twenty. Um, but so it'd be eight cents a minimum to send, right? Um, hmm. and and we like the thought of an emoji to kind of, especially in a text, you know, it, it pops, right? It really jumps out at you. Um, plus we wanted to personalize it with the person's address and their name. And we were worried, how do we get all of this into one text without costing us a fortune, right? Um, and then it was, it's awesome because like I said, I, I, I'm very humble and I know that I don't know everything, right? So my business partner, who's not a technical person goes, well, why don't we just get us, you know, there's unlimited data plans. Why don't we just get a second phone and we'll send it through that phone and, you know, for the amount of texting we're going to be doing, like it's, you know, going to save us a fortune. And, uh, and I'm like, you know, absolutely. Right. So, <laughs> um, so that's what right now, um, Isaiah is, is, is working on a rapper X. He's working on uh, a version of this push bullet script, but a more robust version because we want to be able to track uh, like when it's a bad phone number, cause we'll get a response. We want to capture mm -hmm. that and remove that, you know, actually not remove it. Cause you know, if you remove it, then we'll end up sending to it again. What we want to do is to put it into a table and flag it and say it's actually a bad phone number and use that as a suppression list later. Yeah. Um, or if people mm -hmm. say no or stop or you know go f yourself, right? We want to categorize those uh, in a way that we don't keep bugging them. Yeah. So uh, anyway, yeah, that's pretty important because that that's a good way of getting a, a stop order of some yeah, kind. In trouble. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. If, um, if you don't uh, heed to what people they right yeah although it you know from what we've you know discussed with other people and stuff is that like it, you know no one is really using the do not call list and and i can tell you one reason why because when we first looked into it we're like hey let's let's make sure we get that and we'll suppress everyone and um the list was going to be like I forget how much, but it was, let's say at least, at least 5,000, I think more per year, right? So it's, it's, you got to keep, you know, subscribing to it. And I think it was even more, it was like seven grand or something to, to have access to the do not, you know, call or text list. I mean, it's, if, if the government truly wanted people to be using this thing, they should make it available for free, right? Or at least, yeah, yeah, sure. You know, a hundred bucks a quarter or something like is, you know, to me, a reasonable price that I could pay, but you know, who, who's got the money to spend seven grand a year just to, to have access to this list and, and whatever. So, um, so yeah, so it, uh, we're, we're adding some cool functionality, but I thought it was just a really great, like, Hey, let's rethink this, you know, what's our goal and, and, um, and what we're going to do. And then we're just going to make sure we have. So the other cool thing about push bullet is my phone will be here. I can literally look at the stuff, but he can be at his computer, he's now an hour away from me, but he can be looking at the API, you know, the API goes and pulls the data, right? So it can see what was sent and what was received. So he can either mm -hmm. be calling the people or responding through the API, you know, as a text, if I'm busy or not looking at the phone or whatever. So yeah. uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah, it, it sounds really cool. Yeah, and APIs are amazing. <laughs> Yeah, it, 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 it's it's a really good idea to, to have that. Um, nice for the rest of us when we actually learn about the ability to use those. Um, we, we have with APIs at work where one of the tasks that I recently was set to document uh, where there might be a need for uh, some RPA, but if if they truly want to do it with an automated robot, um, they'll be shooting themselves in the foot because both ends of the automation have APIs, uh, fully worked out Microsoft APIs mm -hmm. um, in two different versions, sure, but still fully working stuff. And by having full access to one, 
and pretty much full access to the other. There's no really any limitation to how you can interact between the APIs of the two, um, but still they want to go using the human interface, you know, the graphical interface, instead of taking just a small extra amount of time of actually figuring out if all we have to do is backwards engineer or whatever you'd want to call the parts we need and use the API. It, it should be fairly straightforward. Um, but yeah, it's, it's not me doing it. So that's what I would have done, but yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's funny. Yeah. Yeah. It, it it's, it's kind of weird, right? It, it's, it's structured data over here that you want to put in a structured form over here. But this one is actually able to send the data or you, have, you are able to receive the data using the API and you are able to input the data using another API. But instead of doing that, connecting those two pieces or putting a simple middle uh, agent in between them, yeah. they'll, they'll want it to output to the graphical user interface, then open that, scrape it, put it into a structured database, open the graphical user interface on the other one, yeah. open its input form and put in the data and then submit it to the server. Whereas wow. you, just the load time alone would, yeah. yeah. It, it, it could be a matter of thousands and thousands of records each day. And I'm not even sure that the loading time would really allow you to get it done in time. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> this is ballpark related. Um, the other day, I was working on the uh, the mentorship site um, for for extracting. Now, if you're not a member, it's uh, what mentorship uh, dot the dash automator com. And uh, so I'm trying to you know get both mentors and mentees and connect them. And actually, most people are going to be both, I think. But um, the the tool I made because I didn't want to spend a fortune until I really found that there people were interested. Um, I didn't have a way. I didn't ask them to build me any sort of a back end where I can easily get the information out, right? It would have been nice to have API access. And I thought, well, maybe I can still use the WordPress API, um, but no matter what, I could go to the page and use web scraping to grab the stuff from the page and dump it into a spreadsheet for me and then just go across each person, right? So I had started that mm -hmm. and then I asked uh, Isaiah, I'm like, hey, you know, before I do all the stuff, like, do you have any thoughts on how to, how to you know, is there a better approach? Like, could I watch the network traffic or this or that? And he goes, well, you know, it's, where's it getting it from? You know, it's in, it's in WordPress. He's like, you know, there's a database, right? The second one he said it's in WordPress. And I, then I remembered like, yeah, WordPress is just a big database, right? And, and I being yeah. an admin to that database, I have programmatic access to that database. So like, there's no reason for me to be scraping one person at a time when now granted, I, I may not necessarily be able to do without a hockey, but I can go into the, there's some sort of an admin panel, right? For PHP, where you can run queries. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and I sh should be able to easily get all that information and export it, you know, very quickly. So um, that was a good lesson learned of like, oh, oh yeah, think about where you're getting the data. You know, is it in a, it's already in a database in electronic form that I have access to, right? And that's what I just, yeah spaced out on it. Did we lose you? Yeah. No, no, we didn't lose me. I'm, I'm, I'm having some kind of, uh, I have too much lag, might be a way of putting it. So I just tried to, to see if I could do some stuff. I've closed quite a few windows here and made sure that nothing else was using the internet. And uh, now I just wanted to remove my video feed for a moment to see if that helped. But gotcha. uh, yeah, I don't think I have much more that I can really close now. So. Yeah. Um, anyway, so I thought that was a, a fun, you know, that we can make this a, an actual short 
uh, podcast, but it was a, a fun general topic uh, to, to review. Yeah, absolutely. All right, man. It's good talk. Yeah, it was, Joe. Bye. Bye.